Hello and a very warm welcome to Express Mobility. In this new episode, we have a very special guest who has created and designed some of the most successful SUVs in India. She has been behind setting up the design studio for Mahindra and Mahindra in Mumbai. An alumni of IIT Bombay, we have Kripa Anantan, director of Crux Studio. Welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you very much, Dipanshu. It's great to be here. At present, Kripa is working on a prototype for the micro mobility sector that shines a new light on sustainability and the promise to be a game changer in the segment. She's focusing on areas that will lead to upcycling of auto parts and lowering carbon footprint and landfills. So first of all, I would like to understand from you, uh, tell us uh, about the concept that you have created and could you take us through uh, the thought process behind it? I just started uh, Truck Studio a couple of months back, December 2021, the Panchu. And at that point in time, uh, it's a service, it's an expert service. I bring my expertise of 24 plus years in the automotive industry uh, as a chief of design. And I have a huge network of experts in the area of automotive design and development. So um, I conceived this Crux Studio, which would be able to offer this expert services. And repeatedly, the questions were coming up about, you know, exactly what are expert services? Some of it is well known. You know, you have a brief and I designed to it, uh, exterior design, interior design, advanced design, but uh, design language. But there were certain areas which are so intrinsic within an organization that people were not aware. How do you create concepts, something that's completely new? Um, How do you uh, design a brief? How do you decide this is what the car should look like? These should be the functionality. This should be the comfort factor. So I said that instead of trying to explain it, it's quite difficult to explain. Why don't I do something that's really fresh, very contextual, very relevant, very new? And uh, that's when I started off on this. So it's a very fast process. And that's how it will be even in the real world, real world, where you take two months and a little bit more to reach to the stage. So how do you uh, do a concept? And in this case, of course, 2-2, which is the concept that's come out, is mainly about sustainability. So uh, it's a micro mobility solution and it uses upcycled parts. The upcycled parts of it, I think, is the world first it, that uh, it's being attempted, and I'm quite uh, chuffed with the outcome. So, uh, who's the target audience for this compact car? The con- it's a proof of concept. The intent is not necessarily uh, orientated towards a customer, but there are three types of customers that uh, I have sort of worked on for this concept. So, one is like young, college going, 18 uh, years onwards. So uh, you have a safe, uh, very last mile. So this is not meant to go for on highways, but it's a very short distance. Let's say you live three or four kilometers uh, from your school or college. Uh, So the one possibility is youngsters who would otherwise have to take um, uh, maybe walk or maybe uh, depend on what is available now. And of course, they could also use two wheelers if they have them. Uh, The other is stay at home uh, adults. So men and women, Uh, who, because of the pandemic, are now at home and want to use it for chores. So you have to uh, go to the grocery store to buy something, or you want to go to the gym, or you want to go to the metro to take a metro to go long distance. And the third is older people, like a 70-year-old. Again, it's a very wide demographic. I'm talking about men and women of different age groups, but especially older people who I was talking to are uncomfortable using a motorbike or a scooter And they may not have a a car or they may not be comfortable driving a car. But this is a a shared mobility solution. So you can't buy it. Uh, But it is a solution that's available for you. When you go out of uh, your society, you will have 2-2 there or a zone, a 2-2 zone where these will be available. Think Yulu bikes. So uh, you get into one and go to wherever you have to go to. Leave it at the next zone or the third zone and pay as you move or get an OTP pay pay as you move. So, uh, you know, since, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, these kind of form factors are evolving, as you mentioned about Yulu, and, you know, it is really doing really great in certain parts of the cities where, you know, people are looking for the last mile delivery. And, you know, these these bikes are now being used by Zomato and, you know, Amazon delivery guys. Uh, what is uh, your thought process about the future form factors that like Yulu and now Tutu, uh, how how do you see the future form of mobility in India, uh, seeing the congestion and the pollution, given those as a problem statement? 
what is your view one possibility it's always difficult to uh, uh, guess or know what the future is if any of us could do that right. but uh, what we do at early stages of design is create multiple options for a future that we know is real and then we uh, envision multiple futures what if it actually becomes this way and then for each of those situations you design a concept so the concept level it's not ready for production it has to have feasibility studied but what's uh, sort of important or interesting is that uh, tutu that we have designed uh, you can remove uh, part of the roof and the uh, rear glass the rear windshield add a panel and it get, does get converted into a a uh, commercial or an integral cargo that you can use so i do see a lot of uh, rise in uh, cargo applications and how to make it safe this last mile 10 minute delivery 30 minute delivery on very congested roads uh, yes. so uh, that is something that i think needs to be addressed form factors for such applications um uh, would be uh, driven by functionality of footprint uh, parking ease of maneuverability but at the same time i would advise uh, keeping a weather eye out for safety it should not come at the cost of uh, uh, a safe option i think all the options that should be worked on this may not happen but my recommendation should be at all times we should consider safety weather protection mm-hmm. uh, and uh, not just go for the cheapest form factor um and of course I, i would expect all of it in the future to be electric so that tailpipe emissions are not there so you mentioned about usage of uh, old parts and up like upcycling of parts and you know using certain standard uh, parts where you know you have the availability uh, what how will you manage the this one is the question and going forward what is uh, how do you see you know once we at- attain those numbers uh, what are your thoughts on that um talking to a few people in the industries end of life vehicles crushing units uh, where they talk about steel being crushed and non steel parts becoming um given being given to scrap agents and who of course down the line uh, recycle reuse reduce uh so that's what gave me the idea that a lot of these parts are available beyond crushers what is being crushed is going to steel mills for construction Mm, what is the idea of circular design is to extend the life of the part it is not to say that you know you'll get 15 years more but even if you get one year more and i would say let's target 3 years the amount of energy if uh, you're saving amount of efficiencies you're saving are large so if i take a, those would be the scenarios that we would work on the panchu if it is a 3 year life extension then what would you have to do after 3 years uh, all the investments or effort that you have created at the beginning cannot be scrapped right you can't say start all over again or do you plan for just a 3 year life cycle i think these would be the important questions that are asked right so the first thing was to would be to identify how many upcyclable parts are there what quantity and then to decide design for that Right. Uh, so there's no straight easy answer but i think there are a lot of solutions and i do feel that the new world where there's a lot of it enablement uh, mm-hmm. telematics that are going into it will uh, further make this possible which earlier you know find them, finding that source finding that material would have been so difficult whereas now it's all being enabled with the uh, uh, online platforms so i think uh, that again would enable it so you have been behind with one of the most successful suvs these are large vehicles you know and uh, how what was the thoughts what was the thinking behind creating this micro mobility concept uh, what was your problem statement and what was the answer you figured it out um at all points of time i think all of us and i can definitely talk about designers uh have many things going on in their minds so i have at least two other ideas that i'm not talking about yet and uh, to choose the concept that came out first and uh, um so uh it's not that um, i'm limited by my uh, exposure uh, uh, as a suv designer in fact to be honest uh, though the suv part of it is most famous and that's quite uh, easy to understand a la- large port- part of the portfolio that i handled was tractors and trucks 
Uh, and uh, in fact, one of the last vehicles that I designed was the Mindra Atom, which was shown in the 22 Auto Expo, which is a mobility solution. So um, there is no good answer for it. It's just what patterns do you see and what seemed relevant at that time. Can you tell us about what is the commercial or business objective behind the concept? In Crux Studio, we are not planning to get into manufacturing. So uh, let me split that into two. So the business angle for Crux Studio is to look for partners who would uh, work as the source of the feed and to work uh, to look for uh, people who take it up to manufacturing. So that's my business angle to find these partners, uh, maybe link them together or be part of that venture so that uh, we can take a concept like Tutu to reality, which is a micro mobility concept, either commercial or personal. Uh, by personal, I mean shared and uh, using upcycled parts. Uh, uh, but uh, otherwise, you know, depending on what volumes you're targeting and what sort of company you are, uh, one door assembly could be anything from eight to 10 crores uh, of investment. Okay. So two door assemblies is, you know, to that order. Mm -hmm. um, of course, if it's smaller volumes, or as I said, it depends on your business model. It could be a little cheaper, but still there is a lot of investment that you're saving. And I said, as I said, it's a lot of energy that you're saving. It's a lot of raw material that go in, goes into tooling that you're saving. It goes into setting up a body shop that you're saving. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would be the business angle that I would work on the next to say that if you're going to take some concept like this uh, mm -hmm. forward, what would be the sort of investments that you're saving? And what would the business case be for, let's say, a medium volume, for a large volume, uh, for, uh, you know, whether it's going to be locally manufactured, whether it's going to be centrally manufactured. Mm -hmm. So that would be the next uh, part of once we've finished with the concept and you say that part of it is work working, some of it needs to be tweaked. And then you take it to the next stage, which is the feasibility stage, both for the business and for engineering and for sourcing. So that would be the next stage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you currently talking to some customers, investors, and automakers to take it to the real world and from prototype to the real model? I'm hoping that talking to you, the fun show would get me access to these people. Uh, jokes aside, I am talking to uh, some interested parties uh, interested in the concept. Okay. Um, I have not got any investors or uh, I've not reached out to that. Either they have not reached out to me or I've not reached out to them. And it is possible that those uh, manufacturers who are interested already have some investor, investors. Uh, so that is a likelihood, but directly I've not uh, reached out to the investors. And I'm talking to uh, one or two um, companies that have the source, that is, uh, who have the crushing uh, ability and hence have the feed. But very early attempts, a lot of effort went into making the concept and uh, Right. Uh, that would again be part of the next step. Uh, understanding from the from your viewpoint, I know uh, what kind of uh, future segments do you see evolving in India? Uh, you know, you have a good twenty five years of experience in Indian market. Uh, you know, SUVs is currently the flavor of the market. But do you think you now, just from your viewpoint, uh, would sedans and hatchback will slowly fade away or? how it will be uh, going forward. Uh, micro mobility will come forward. What, how do you see it? Future guessing, yes, it's gonna be difficult. Um, there's definitely two wide streams. Right. Uh, and uh, one stream is where there is incremental improvement on existing uh, types of mobility. Uh, so SUVs will become sleeker, will become, because they have to become more aerodynamic, more efficient. Mm -hmm. um, always all form factors will exist, but certain, uh, and in India for a short foreseeable midterm, let's say uh, foreseeable feature, future, I think uh, for personal mobility, SUV form factor, but they, 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 they will shift to uh, electric. Uh, first converted electric and uh, eventually uh, born electric, hopefully sooner than later. So those would remain, but uh, all I mean by incremental is to say that uh, it will be identifiable as an SUV. It will be identifiable as a sedan. So there will be that stream of products that will start. Um, but the mobility form factor, I know it's been uh, uh, spoken about for a long time, but I do think that it will happen, will change because uh, the way batteries are laid out or the way uh, you know the space um, 
can be treated differently will spark new ideas and you will see form factors that will come up with new names and uh, there'll be shapes that you know un- unused to before and of course some of them will be successful some of them will not be so successful so there will be a, a renewed interest in making new things i mean um, if you go back 30 years when crossover started with uh, you know nissan um, i'm not able to recall the model uh, murano um, yeah. or if you say that you know when did uh, other form factors start like a uh, station wagon say i mean it's not like you know right on day one all the form factors started and each of these start because of some reason some need some uh, desire on a bunch of people to create something new and uh, customers wanting to explore a lifestyle something different so uh, like that i think we have hit that epoch where new form factors around electric vehicles will come i think it will be led by mobility solutions for last mile first mile both commercial and uh, personal mobility in urban congested areas uh, where range may not be that much of an issue you would have swapping you would have stations you would have charging infrastructure all of that would be there and the other would be a very high end segment where again the vehicles will be expensive but you'd have huge range and they'll be like really premium and they'll have the best uh, features they will, they will have a ton autonomous features built in from day one and then of course the entire bunch would change as i said it would change at uh, a different uh, it will start with converting to electric vehicles and then then become bevs but all of that will happen so it's a very very uh, exciting future so some incremental form factors and some very very dramatically new ones one last question i want to ask uh, about your stint at mahindra uh, what was the problem statement and design brief uh, was given when you know we worked on products like uh, xuv 500 and scorpio so uh, within an organization you have a bunch of people uh, who work on the brief so it's called a 100 day study and small teams are formed which work on okay you you've got a design language that's sort of frozen you have a company vision on what where the company wants to head uh, what are the attributes that we want to be leadership on so those two are a background scenario in which you work on a new product and uh, uh, scorpio and xuv uh, are uh, quite different and uh, so these teams work on what exactly what i've done for tutu quickly generating two three concepts which could be the next uh, scorpio was a project name uh, and uh, xuv500 the project name was uh, um, come on uh, i'm not able to recall it uh, uh, right away but um, w201 so okay. the one that you see that came out as inspired from cheetah or you know the, the scorpio that was uh, 2002 and a new one is out a very exciting one exciting one is uh, in the cards so um, it depends on uh, what came out and what fit the uh, the brief that was defined the company vision and you know what customers are seeking 3 4 years into the future so very different products scorpio and xuv500 and uh, I, i'm very happy to see that the concept that was chosen uh, and made to made it to the roads uh, was extremely successful both the models are very successful and i'm proud to have been part of those teams thank you so much ma'am Thank you so much for giving your input. Thanks. Thanks to Panchu. It was wonderful to be here. Bye bye.